right, it's uh, August 10th, 2015. Um, tell you the truth, I don't know what week this is as far as the updates. It's just going to be a little short update on my aquaponic system. Since I only have one thing growing, um, I'm going to focus on my fish, as you can see. I've made quite a few changes since the last one. Uh, other than Obviously, as you can see, the goldfish have gotten quite a, quite a bit larger. Um, the um, bluegill, the four bluegill that I have, have in here, they're, uh, they've stayed relatively the same size, even though they are quite a bit thicker. And look at this guy. And uh, I'm pretty sure now that I have uh, been a little bit of research. I got three females, one male. The male is this guy down there at the bottom, as you can see, by the air stone. And he chases everybody around. And um, he has his own little corner over here. And uh, he doesn't like people bothering him. Over here is my Texas uh, cichlid that I brought taken out of the sump. He was getting beaten up by the, on a regular basis by the other Texas cichlid that's in there that's about twice the size. He hasn't been causing any trouble, which is great. Uh, all the Placostomus, or I guess plural, I got three of them, Placostomai, I think that's the way you say it, have all grown huge, and as, as you can see, there's relatively no algae growth in here whatsoever. They they definitely take care of it. Um, I just finished feeding. Uh, I, I try to feed a mixture of some flakes. The goldfish love that. I do have some pellets. And uh, they all seem to like. Their, I mean, there's nothing left over after a feeding. And I guess the elephant in the room or the big ass fish that I have in here or the catfish uh, that big guy there is that one that I've been growing for the last uh, few months he's just gotten huge and he's definitely got his own little school going those other two I added uh, those were from a uh, well you know the other two large looking ones were a couple that uh, I added from a fishing trip they were kind of small didn't want to uh, eat them I um, managed to keep them alive in a bubbler tank that I keep with me uh, long enough to bring them home and they're, they're doing just great. Now there's a, a little one that's in that little pack if you could see him. He's about uh, three and a half inches and he's part of their little uh, school of fish and um, my brother caught that in a, one of his last fishing trips up to Elephant Butte there up over here uh, in New Mexico. And he caught that, uh, I believe, with a, a throw net, along with some minnow. Uh, and he brought them all back. Uh, almost all the minnow are gone. I, I do think there's a couple that somehow haven't been eaten. But, you know, that's their lot in life, to be eaten by bigger fish. And uh, anyways, the catfish are doing great. Now, my last fishing trip over to... Uh, over here in Texas, Tornillo, there's a little uh, private lake. Uh, a friend of mine caught this little baby catfish. See him down there by the filter. Yeah, he's a quite a bit darker than the southern one, so I'm really interested to see what he's going to turn out. But uh, he's already been alive for about a week and. Uh, he seems to be doing fine. He's adjusted. He hasn't, for some reason, joined the pack or the school of catfish. But uh, he seems relatively happy and uh, healthy. Uh, I do have a couple crawfish, and they've taken uh, to living there in the little drain of the, the IBC. Uh, if you've been following my videos, you know that my really big crawfish, he was a big red one, he must have been about 12, 
inches long. Uh, for some reason he died and never never did figure out why. And uh, I had to bury him with into the garden where he's devoted his last uh, last bit of energy to the plants, you know, circle of life and everything. But uh, that's about it. Um, I guess to mention that the, the other way that I feed him uh, pretty regularly is just by whatever gets zapped in the bug zapper. Falls in and the fish love it. I can hear them all night. Every time there's a zap, a bug falls in and the fish are fighting for it. So I'm pretty sure that's keep them happy. Um, latest addition too. And you're probably wondering, well, why does he have it hanging from the ceiling? Well, uh, shortly after I bought this, and uh, I think I got this at, at Allied Aquaponics online. Great deal. I got this thing for, I think it was like uh, $29, $27, including shipping. Um, I did notice it gets really hot. Uh, i.e. there's the fins also learn that you must have it horizontal otherwise it'll stop working uh, and what I've done is I have it hanging up here not not just to get great airflow but also so I don't have the problem of if the power goes out water coming back and uh, filling up the the pump gravity's helping me with that problem because I have a couple of these and I don't know if they're one-time use only because they only worked once. Water still got up. As you can see, they got a couple droplets. And I just barely put this thing up today. But uh, see, the power's off, and gravity uh, stops the water from coming back into my pump. I'll pause this real quick, and I'll show you uh, the agitation. I also wanted to show you, I um, haven't turned the pump back on yet, but I wanted to show you something. I, I've gotten used to it, but it, it, it is kind of crazy. As you can see now, the fish are no longer afraid of me. Uh, well, except for the catfish. But even the bluegill come up to the top, because uh, I think they finally have learned that uh, the big hands that and the shadow that appears over their little domain gives them all their food. They've already eaten so they're not as friendly as they usually are because when they haven't eaten they will actually come up and take food out of my hand. Now I'll, I'll have to do that in the next ep update. That's pretty cool. Well, let me get my fat finger out of the way of the out of the frame. Okay let me pause this real quick and I'll show you uh, how great this pump works. All right, got the pump going. And yes, it is kind of loud, but it's outside, so it's not a big deal. Um, but it definitely gets lots of water flow going, which really helps to keep the tank clean. Um, before, I had some areas where um, the water flow, um, I guess I was getting some little eddies and all the, it seemed that I would get some debris that would collect in, in certain spots and somehow or another my pump filter which is connected to the swirl tank that I have here wasn't able to get at them. Well with this I have enough water agitation. I got two 12 inch float stones in here that it moves all the water everywhere and the fish really like it. But I've also noticed that an added benefit to this is uh, it's actually helping to keep the water cooler. Now we're here in, in already August here in far west Texas and uh, it's been you know on average about 95, 96 degrees we have strung together a couple days of 100 plus temperatures but on average we're talking about 95, 96 degrees during the day and about 75 at night unless it rains, which it has been raining quite a bit, then the temperature will dip down to maybe 72. Uh, it'll be extremely muggy. But I have noticed that with all this airflow going on, I think it's helping 
to draw the heat and uh, out of the tank into the air because the water is quite a bit cooler. Um, and uh, the fish are really happy about that. You can't see them when the pump's going, but it works great. Uh, and I'll show you my sole plant that's in my system right now. Okay, back inside with my aquaponic setup. You can see I have almost nothing growing. Sole plant I have is this, and I was kind of worried about it. As you see, uh, got some droopiness here, and almost all the leaves, if you've been following my updates, have fallen off, except for these here. These look like they're about to fall off. These have regained a, a nice healthy look. And I thought I screwed myself over because what I did is it was over here on the corner, right along the corner. And what I wanted to do, what I did was I uprooted it and put it down much deeper uh, where I thought it would help um, the plant. Also, it was long enough that I wanted to use this to kind of steady it and keep it in an upright position. The problem I had is it got real windy. The stringers that I have attached to the ceiling, all they did was pull off leaves. And uh, so I thought this plant was a goner. But I was noticing today, if you see, I have a bunch of new little bugs. They're getting ready to, they're already sprouting, which is great news. So it looks like there's still life in that, and I'm very happy about that because I'd like to continue growing this for a couple of years and then eventually move it outside to my backyard. So that's it, that's the latest update, and uh, I'll start, stop yammering now. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, uh, please leave them. And uh, if you like these videos, you know, uh, share and uh, subscribe. Ask your friends to uh, subscribe. Appreciate it. We'll get back at you later.